I think uh, uh, I'm going to try to uh, explain to you a bit about uh, what we do right now as a company, what uh, types of products are we building and why do we think uh, that uh, our focus on uh, scalable products and products that need to have mass adoption uh, is something that is uh, the winning strategy for us as a product development agency and for this market as such. So MVP Workshop uh, basically uh, defined itself as a product development company that tries to define the needs, the actual needs of uh, uh, the users of our clients to help them build our uh, scalable products and products that need to have mass adoption uh, is something that is uh, the winning strategy for us as a product development Sorry, but it seems uh, I had some sort of lag, uh, you know, uh, while talking and uh, I started hearing myself. Uh, no, I so... think just, just came into the room and then until he muted himself, we had a little bit oh, of sound. Okay. But... Sorry. And uh, in certain cases, you know, we also try to help uh, our clients also grow these products, which means that we have clients that are with us for several years now that have active um, uh, blockchain products with thousands of users and uh, we believe that uh, our approach was also a part of uh, their growth and that we grew together as companies so as as i said you know uh, my name is ivan and uh, i run this company called mvp workshop uh, what we tried to do uh, in general and the reason we entered the web free space was that uh, we tried to build actually an email system uh, back uh, in 2015 and uh, this email system was uh, uh, desired to be very private uh, and uh, the, back then we basically discovered the ethereum looking for the best solution to do this we did not really choose the best solution, uh, not because uh, <laughs> not because of blockchain or, or Ethereum, but because uh, we did not uh, manage to find uh, the right economic model for it. When we started uh, working on uh, this product, Ethereum and gas were actually pretty cheap. Uh, we were able to build an email that we launched in uh, early 2017 without it on, its own token. It used Ethereum. Uh, to send and receive uh, emails and messages, but we basically failed uh, to, to, to make it uh, usable in terms that uh, when Ethereum uh, price skyrocketed to a couple of hundred and then to a thousand dollars, we ended up with the world's most expensive email. Uh, but because as a company, you know, we were we were building uh, very different products. We realized that uh, there is a lot of future in Ethereum and similar, uh, similar, you know, technology stacks and in blockchain itself. So we decided to focus just on this market going forward. And uh, in general, uh, we tried to uh, apply our 15 years of experience in building software products uh, to to this space. Uh, the first client we worked with uh, was called uh, Celsius Network. Uh, they had a successful ICO in early 2018, and right now they uh, have uh, a, a, a crypto lending platform that uh, manages over $600 million in loans and uh, has over 70, 77,000 people with active wallets who deposited the uh, money to the Celsius network. Uh, so this is uh, probably, uh, you know, the, the biggest, uh, uh, it's more or less the biggest client that we have right now and working with Celsius for these last almost three years was a great experience going from uh, zero users to 77,000. So uh, when we put ourselves in this position, we had to understand that uh, we are building completely new products. Uh, with really raw, raw business ideas. You know, three years ago when we started working with Celsius and similar companies, there was only one uh, other company that was uh, interested in uh, lending cryptocurrencies. And right now DeFi is obviously pretty much uh, the, the, leading, uh, uh, the leading use case, you know, basically when we look at uh, 
uh, in the blockchain ecosystem right now. And uh, we are using uh, very unstable new technologies. So uh, while we were already accustomed to entering uh, new markets or trying to solve a problem in a different way, we, we developed two technologies. With web three technologies, we, we had a completely uh, different challenge because uh, R&D was uh, very different uh, than uh, uh, building other types of products, and I'll explain why. Uh, when, you're, uh, when you're trying to uh, design for value, basically, for a product that needs to be ad adopted by uh, a mass market, uh, you have to understand that uh, you are not really building a blockchain product, you are building a product. And you have to think about, uh, is this technology stack actually the best way of, uh, for you to go? Why do you, uh, or that famous question, more or less, why do you actually need blockchain? And do people actually want to have the problem you're trying to, uh, to solve for solve? In uh, blockchain, this is um, uh, basically uh, 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 still a chicken and egg problem in certain terms for several reasons, you know. Uh, I would say that all blockchain products being built right now have value. And that is because uh, of a lot of R&D being invested in the technology itself. With blockchain products, uh, you, you, you are relying on the early market. You, know, you are uh, relying on the people who want to try new things. And in many cases, even if it's proven that your business model, like for our email, was uh, a bad idea in the end, and that you probably need to rethink the product itself, um, you still get a lot of value from just building on top of the technology. Uh, right now, we have, as I said, uh, a company that deals uh, just with uh, building uh, Web 3.0 products uh, for other people. We have uh, 50 employees, you know, most of them are developers. And uh, this company grew from uh, nothing as a spin of startup uh, for us. Uh, uh, you know, being spin off from our uh, main business, as in, and, it currently, and currently it's our main business, and it's the, the thing that uh, puts food on our table. And it's all because we built this one product or several products uh, uh, based on blockchain that uh, had no business being in the market right now, but they enabled us to learn how certain problems are solved. So I noticed a lot of products, you know, we've been working with who I think have no um, possibility to currently be used in the market. Their market penetration is low, but I think that the teams behind them are going to uh, use this new knowledge very well in a couple of years. And uh, then they will probably be building uh, either new products that will actually hit the mainstream market, or these people are probably even going to uh, have to last out uh, a long period with the current product and then uh, to show the world that uh, this is actually needed a couple of years from now. Uh, I would say that even, you know, blockchain as a technology in many cases and for many industries as a supportive technology is still um, uh, out there mostly for innovators and early adopters and uh, many industries are not yet uh, ready for it completely so we'll probably see uh, a lot larger grow in something like two to five years but when you focus on these things you know you're the adopters and, and all of these people you don't want to, to do that uh, for too long you know if you want to have a profitable company uh, you need to uh, move forward and uh, you know if you want to grow you basically need to reach a product market fit and uh, for this we were mostly used uh, classical techniques, uh, you know, that you can read about in startups. Uh, in many cases, uh, the first uh, meetings with our clients are basically working with them on canvases and uh, product discovery, the, the, basically defining the value pro proposition and uh, how uh, is uh, our product, uh, the product that we are going to build for them, going to solve the issues and to deliver value to the end users. And uh, we even developed some of uh, the tools uh, that uh, are being used for this now uh, ourselves. You know, so I think that in uh, aspects uh, of uh, finding room for blockchain in these products is uh, not doing it by force, but basically gathering the facts, you know, about the technology itself, you know, and why is it, as I said, a good solution for uh, 
a certain type of product. Uh, you know, uh, all of the time you need to think about how blockchain is delivering value. So do not ever consider it the solution per se. You know, always uh, just uh, consider it a part of part of the technology stack you are. Uh, trying to build to prove something, you know, to prove that um, certain uh, user base actually needs uh, something like this. Uh, when uh, you are building uh, a product uh, that is going to be your MVP in these cases, in many, uh, in many cases you can even uh, test some of these things out without blockchain itself, you know, you can basically uh, in the early versions of the product uh, for beta, you know, for showing investors, etc. You can uh, try to show the business logic and the user flow, even um, if the blockchain part is not ready yet, or maybe you, you didn't even start working on it. But I think that um, one of the main things is to, in th th these cases, is to show that uh, people are actually going to find this product sticky and blockchain is just going to add additional value in different ways based on uh, what you are trying to achieve here. So, uh, as I said, you know, uh, we failed uh, on our first attempt uh, uh, in uh, defining the business model for the first product we were building. And that hurt us a lot because uh, we, we always uh, considered ourselves uh, very good at doing that, you know, defining business models for ourselves and for our customers. So, as I also mentioned, you know, usually in these cases, we use, use the stuff like business model canvases, value proposition canvases to visualize this uh, for uh, our customers and uh, for ourselves uh, when we were doing post-mortems and similar things. So, uh, during our post-mortem, uh, you know, for this first uh, blockchain related project, we basically also decided to uh, create uh, a new tool because we realized that visual visualizing it on a business model canvas is not working because uh, the price point and uh, you know the way that uh, we had to pay uh, for ethereum network to validate the incentives for different people to be a part of this and then we couldn't control that price was our downfall uh, we decided to create two different canvases one is called the token uh, modeling canvas i won't be really mentioning it uh, more today but you can download it on our website and the second one is the central business model canvas so we went uh, again uh, from uh, you know who are our users what do they actually need this is an example that we filled out on uh, product that you also build, I will share a link to it. It's called Scriptarnica. It's basically a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, book sharing service with microtransactions and uh, giving you the ability to pay as you go. It's targeted to different types of people, you know, basically readers or researchers who want to uh, pay just uh, for one part of the book, either because they want to see will they like it, uh, or they maybe are doing some sort of an academic research and just need uh, a certain chapter for a thousand books and, not, uh, and they do not need to buy the thousand books themselves, they just need these specific chapters. So we added different players also, we realized over time that the, the product itself is very interesting for people who want to self-publish, for indie authors, because of the academia part also for universities. And uh, we tried to define the value proposition for this and uh, to define the solution that you can see here. Um, Basically, then the main difference is uh, between a classical business model canvas and this canvas is that uh, here we are trying to basically understand uh, in these uh, cases how actually are we going to uh, validate uh, you know these transactions to, in order to reach uh, to reach trust between our users uh, and how are we going to incentivize uh, the validators for this. Uh, the other things uh, really important also is how do we keep in touch with the, the, user, the user base and how is the network actually being governed. So when you look at this, and again, you can download uh, this from the website, we'll share the links later on Discord. Uh, when you look at this, uh, this is a somewhat changed business model canvas, which, which tries to uh, uh, focus on the value or, or proposition of decentralization and using blockchain for this uh, this business it's definitely proven for us to be a pretty good uh, 
visualization tools for uh, different uh, different projects. Uh, so one of the most, most things when you are working with canvases or visualization tools, and when you start getting first feedback or either experts in the industry or the domain and uh, from early users is uh, to actually try and uh, validate the ideas and uh, not to take them from the So the first thing that we try to do here is to understand what is what are our risky assumptions basically. We try to give them certain value, you know, uh, stuff so like, uh, okay, can we actually uh, get uh, uh, legal, you know, permission to publish books on such platform because uh, maybe a lot of authors uh, have, uh, uh, you know, strict contracts or uh, contracts that they uh, that uh, provide exclusivity to their publishers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we try to gauge, you know, uh, how how big of an impact uh, will this uh, have if uh, we are wrong, and uh, what is the possibility of being wrong. Many of these things are relatively easy to prove, uh, and in some cases you actually need to build an early version of the product and start talking to customers. But in blockchain space, as I said, uh, uh, they are a bit harder because usually we are dealing with two different kind of types of variables. When you are building a, an old school, you know, Web 2.0 technology product, you basically have to verify um, do the user want, want this. And uh, if they don't, you are in the wrong market. With blockchain, uh, even if they don't want it right now and you do not have a big enough market, maybe that will change in a year for different reasons. We'll mention them. Uh, and But the second thing also is uh, can the technology actually support this? And in many cases, uh, we had to build, uh, uh, you know, the entire, the entire uh, product to actually show the people that uh, it can actually be achieved with the current level of uh, blockchain technology that we have and uh, that is uh, pretty much uh, uh, what we had to prove the other thing you are proving is uh, is the decentralized uh, way of doing things actually better than the centralized way you know there in many cases uh, speed you know ability to control certain outcomes etc are much easier in uh, centralized systems but uh, our, if our main value is coming from decentralization, uh, then you need to prove that the, the opportunity of decentralization is basically um, valuable enough compared to what uh, to the centralized systems uh, you know your competitors are currently using. Uh, then probably the thing that. Uh, needs to be understood uh, in certain ways and there is a downfall of uh, many blockchain products because they rely on uh, this uh, completely new technology, well, completely new, it's around 10 years now, but <laughs> relatively new to a lot of things that we have. Uh, a lot of uh, blockchain applications are actually relatively hard to use for the end user. And uh, we as a company, you know, tried to uh, make uh, these products much easier to use, you know, and we had a lot of uh, chances to do that, you know, when we uh, tried to uh, talk uh, to our customers in plain English instead of uh, trying to teach them blockchain, first of all, and uh, that uh, that was especially useful, as I mentioned, for products such as Celsius Network that, has, uh, that have tens of thousands of users and that basically uh, uh, have to have uh, a really good onboarding flow if they want to keep, keep going. So in many cases, to speak in uh, plain English, you want to display as, as uh, little uh, information as possible. Uh, you want to show just the essential things, which is something uh, developers usually do not like so if uh, we didn't have really good ux designers you know me coming from the engineering side would probably uh, make really bad decisions in the ux parts but uh, happily i think we have some really great uh, designers working at the company and uh, you know when you're working on the minimum valuable product you are basically trying to validate your user personas validate user flows and uh, 
show the people you know that uh, this is something the people are actually going to be using even before uh, uh, building the actual final version or uh, usable version of the product uh, so keep that always in mind you know basically you need to in the first versions of the product you are basically not designing for uh, people to use the product you are designing for people to validate your risky assumptions so if you build a product that is not going to show you uh, if your risky assumptions are actually right or wrong you might be uh, analyzing the wrong data and shooting yourself in the foot because uh, you do not actually understand uh, the user base although uh, your ux design is uh, maybe even flawless you know uh, as i said uh, we really are trying to in some way uh, give back to the community regarding this so if you want to to take a UI kit for wallets, uh, we built over 20, 25 wallets so far, and uh, we decided then to use that knowledge to create a, a UI kit called uh, Wallet.io. Uh, you know, if you go to that website, you can see it in the, uh, the down right corner, and uh, if you just go to that website, you can download and see the entire wallet building uh, UI UX kit uh, and uh, download it and use it for your projects uh, the same as you can download the canvas system we build and other tools uh, for validating uh, blockchain ideas from our website so uh, pretty much uh, as i said as a company we grew from uh, a couple of people uh, doing blockchain projects to 50 employees uh, build, uh, working just to build building blockchain products so far in these uh, close to three years of working together we built over 20 different uh, projects uh, 10 of them were uh, 10 or 11 of them uh, were built on side chains that need to communicate with the main chain in order to bring value to the end users so we really think that uh, during this time uh, we mastered uh, several different uh, public and private blockchains and uh, we really consider blockchain to be a part of our future it's a supportive technology it's going to come together with 5g it's going to uh, come together with uh, mass adoption probably of IoT. Uh, uh, it's already there in fintech and i really think that it's going to be a mainstream part of fintech in two or three years uh, when it comes to corporate use cases what i do see it uh, a lot uh, mostly in terms of uh, you know, uh, working with the uh, supply chains uh, working with uh, iot devices incentivizing peer-to-peer networks etc etc i think we're Unfortunately, going to be waiting between five and ten years for many use cases. And even when we look at uh, sub key corporations right now, they, they're, they're still going through digital transformation. Blockchain is a part of digital transformation for these companies. It's really not um, a solution that they can just plug and play to their existing systems. So even if in two or three years we have a uh, concrete ability to take on really big challenges and I don't think so many industries working with blockchains are completely ready for that but if you are trying to build a product or uh, try, try to be, build a company that is going to be in the lucrative space and be very successful in 5 to 10, 15 years from now I think you should definitely jump on the web 3.0 wagon and uh, use blockchain for your projects uh, thank you, everyone, you know, from, for your time, and uh, I'm looking forward to you know, to any questions. Thank you so much, Ivan. Your sound went a little bit um, patchy um, towards the end, but I think we, we were able to, uh, to get the main points. Um, I don't see any uh, questions in the chat. Um, but I am wondering whether you can, if you are in Discord, whether you can share the either the slides or any kind of resources that, that people might be able to reach you at or, or continue exploring some of the work that you've been doing. I think that would be great. Awesome. In that case, I'll do that. I'll send the links and uh, to the tools and projects and some case studies to Discord. Uh, along with my LinkedIn and uh, 
if anyone wants to reach out, I would love to talk. Sorry about some issues, not sure why that happened. Uh, here in Belgrade, we are uh, under martial law, you know, uh, 20 hours a day, we, uh, you know, going out to the streets, it's forbidden. So right now I'm at home and probably many people are uh, watching Netflix or something. <laughs> so that might be much effective.